Now that we have built the LED matrix, we need to spend a little time to understand how it was put together and how to control it. Let's start by reviewing the LED circuit symbol. A single color LED will have two terminals, one that is positive and one that is negative. In the middle, our symbol looks like a triangle hitting a wall. And coming out of that are two arrows representing light coming off of it. Positive current will go from positive to negative, and so we draw an arrow from left to right. Something more to note, the positive terminal is called the anode, and the negative terminal is called the cathode. Now usually an LED needs about 2 volts to function properly, and we'll usually deal with something like 3.3 .3 volts or 5 volts going through this LED, so we'll usually need to put in a current limiting resistor, but we'll leave that out for right now. If we wanted to control this LED, we could attach one end, the anode, to a GPIO pin. I wrote GP, sorry, I have an R here, GPIO, and the cathode to ground. Now the GPIO pin, we have about 3.3 .3 volts coming out of that, and ground will be 0 volts. That is, the potential here is 3.3, the potential here is zero, and if we want to know how much voltage goes across the LED, we simply take the number that we start with and the number we end with from left to right, and we subtract them. So 3.3 minus zero, and that gets us what we call the potential difference, or at least voltage across the LED. So in our case, voltage is equal to 3.3 minus zero, which is simply 3.3 volts. Now it's important to note that our current is going from left to right because if our current tried to go from right to left then, well, our LED wouldn't work. Actually, the LED would prevent current from passing through. So that's a special property about LEDs that's different than light bulbs. Current can only go in one direction. Now let's look at how we connected the LED matrix. We connected all of the cathodes together on one wire. That is, all the cathodes in a row we would have had LEDs coming off of these. So we can see that these three LEDs all share the same cathode. Now that was just for one row. For the next two rows, we would draw it the exact same way. Now we did essentially the same thing with the anodes. We had three wires that connected uh, LEDs that were in a column. So we had this wire for these LEDs, a second wire for these LEDs, and then a third wire that connected these three. How this looks on our diagram is we need to connect it, but to show that they've connected, we need a dot. So here the wire is connected, here though the wire is not connected. And I can just continue by filling in all these dots. This one doesn't need a dot because that's just a turn. Probably would be good to label these, so here are my anodes, and here over here are my cathodes. So to get an idea of this, if I had electricity, which flowed from here, an electrical current, well the current could flow to this point, and then through this LED, and then through this cathode. It can't go backwards, because we already said that we can't have a current go this way through an LED. So if it picks this LED, it has to go at the cathode. If it doesn't take that junction, it would keep on going straight the electrical current, could take that one. If it doesn't take that one, then our last pick is right here. So we've got what looks like a good setup, but we start running into some problems pretty quickly. Now before we connected cathodes to ground, so let's try doing that here. If all of these are connected to ground, then if I put 3.3 .3 volts here, we'll have a voltage of 3.3 .3 volts across this LED, because at 3.3 .3 and zero, but also I would have it across this LED and as well this LED. So all three of my LEDs would turn on at the same time. That's not what I want. I want to be able to control one of these. Maybe just turn on one of them, maybe all of them, but I want the choice. Now to understand how we can deal with that problem, we need to look at a different example. Again, I'll draw some LEDs. In this case, I'll draw four LEDs. Now I just noticed I haven't been putting my arrows on my LEDs, but that would make things look pretty confusing. What this symbol is, is really a diode, which is similar to a light emitting diode, an LED, but um, 
Just pretend right now with me that they're LEDs. Okay, so what I want to do with these four LEDs is I want to think about all the different possibilities of what I could do with them. Now, to make things a little bit easier, let's think of 3.3 volts as the number one. And we could think of that as well as true. That's a Boolean variable that is it's either true or false, yes or no, one or zero. And then ground is false or off. This can be on and off. So I'm saying my anode, I'm putting a voltage on, that's my 3.3, and my ground, I'll put no voltage, that's zero. So what I could have is I could put this on and this on, that'd be 3.3 and 3.3. I could say on and off, and that's actually the same situation here. I could say off and off, so they're both connected maybe to ground. Or the other case I could have is off and then on. So this would be connected maybe to ground and this connected to 3.3 volts. What I want to see is what would happen in each of these cases. Now if I had this one, if I had 1 and 1, that's on and on, that's 3.3 volts and that's 3.3 volts. The difference across that well, 3.3 minus 3.3 is zero. So there's actually no voltage going across this. And so if I have no voltage, then, well, I can't have something turn on with that. This needs, like I said before, about two volts. Now here, this one would turn on. It's the same example as up here. That is, I had 3.3 minus zero, and on and off. So this one could turn on. Now if I had zero volts going in, because this is off, and zero volts, well, 0 minus 0, of course that's off. So if I connect both to ground, I shouldn't expect anything, so that's off. Now this one's a little bit funny. Um, I have 0 here, but this is on, so that's 3.3. But if I do the subtraction, I have 0 minus 3.3, which is negative 3.3. And what would happen is a current wouldn't want to go this way. It would actually want to flow from this way. It would want to flow from the on part to ground. But I already said before that current can't flow backwards through my LED. So that means that this one will also be off. So there's only one situation where I can turn it on. That's if I have something like ground at the end and something that turns it on on the anode. Okay, but how does that help with our situation with these LEDs? Okay, well how about all I want to do is turn on three of them. And I'll represent something being on as it's colored in red. So maybe I just want to turn this one on and this one on. Okay, we're just thinking about turning on columns one at a time. So I'm looking at this column and I want to be able to control that column. We don't want to control the whole thing at once, that's a little bit more complicated, but I want to be able to say how many of these can turn on. Now, if I want these to turn on, well, they're all connected to the same anode. And my only choice for turning on is I need to have a one down there. If I put a zero for sure, I can't get anything to turn on here. So I need a one there. And these I don't want to turn on. So I should put something, make sure they're off. Zero, make sure they're off. I can never get something on if I have zeros. So I could connect, I could connect these all to GPIO pins, but this one I could set that GPIO pin high, and these two I could set to low. So I have so far three GPIO pins being used. Now the next part is that I could also use these as GPIO pins. Now since I'm using them as GPIO pins, I could turn them high, but I also could turn them low, just like I did over here. So I want to turn this one on, so I have my one going in, I need a zero, so I need an off. And I'll be able to turn this one on. Now for my next one, I have one going in, but I don't want to turn this on, so I need to put a one there. So if I have on and on, there's no potential difference, there's no voltage, because it'll be 3.3 minus 3.3. Lastly, I need the same thing to happen for this LED as over here. So I would put zero. Okay, well, and that pretty much shows us then what we need to do. We need to set three of our pins to GPIO pins, our anodes or our columns, and we need to do the exact same thing with our rows, our cathodes. So we'll in total use six GPIO pins.